Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial we're going to be making a complete Red Bull can with a final render where we're going to have it sitting on some ice and even some little water droplets. Um, I'll bring the ice into the scene here so you can see. It's a little bit noisy so I'll just go into solid mode here but you guys get the idea. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be providing a texture for free as well so you can follow along and hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you do, just subscribe to my channel, like some of my other stuff. I think you'll really enjoy it and learn a lot. But yeah, let's jump into this. And I will also be uploading the final blend file to my Patreon. So those of you who are on Patreon will be getting access to that as well. So first of all, you're gonna need a texture. So I've gone ahead and I've put this texture together in GIMP. And I'm just gonna be providing the file for free. So you can go into the description below on my Gumroad page and you can just put in zero dollars here and then you can download this. Inside is a zip file with the texture we're gonna be using, okay? So once you have that done, go ahead and open up Blender and go ahead and select all the default objects and press delete. We're then gonna go Shift A, we're gonna to go to our mesh options, we're gonna add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder here, we just wanna get the size and dimensions right. So I've just hopped over to the internet and I've typed in Red Bull Can Dimensions. So we can see here, these are the dimensions we're working with. So let's go in Blender, let's select our um, cylinder. Let's press N to bring up our property panel and let's go over to item. And when I come here to the Z component, let's make that point 134, hit enter. And then for the other two dimensions, so these two, the X and the Y, let's make them 0 0.051 and hit enter. So now we have the appropriate dimensions for our can. And um, if we go shift A and just quickly add in a plane, you can see it's quite small and I know it's real world scale, but I wanna work a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna go grab it now and scale it up, but at least the dimensions or the ratio is still correct. So forget about this for now. So now we have this, I've scaled it up. I'm just gonna, um, in fact, let's make sure that we're all on the same page here. So you can see if you add in a plane, you really want it to be about this size relative to the plane here. So then once you have that done, just go control A, very important and make sure to apply the scale and also go control A and apply the rotation just in case we've rotated it. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the plane and I'm gonna go press delete. So now let's grab our can, let's go over to our UV editing and we're gonna go over to our material properties. Now this is a very important part here. So we're gonna go and find a zip file that you should have downloaded in the description. So here I have it on my desktop. It's just called Red Bull Texture by Pixo3D. And once you have that downloaded, you're gonna hop back into Blender and you're gonna to go to your materials tab. Just click new over here and let's call it can. And let's just go over to the base color, click on this um, tab here. And then let's just go and click on image texture. Click on open and then for me it's on my desktop but you might have put it somewhere else. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and go open image. And now if I go over here, I can go Z and I can go material preview. And over here in this window, I'm gonna go ahead and just select some verts on these two bottom circles. I'm gonna go control L. I'm just gonna go G and I'm gonna move them down. And then just to select this over here. And then we're gonna go S, Y and just scale it on the Y and then go G, Y and move it down. And you might have to scale it a little bit more on the Y. We just wanna kind of line it up with this image over here like that. Now you can see that's looking really good because this comes pre UV unwrapped for us. Okay, so let's go back into our layout. And for now, let's just come here to this drop down and let's just come over here to the color and just make a texture so we can see the texture. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. And then let's now go over to our materials. Let's go over here and go plus and go new and let's just call this metal bear. And let's just tab into edit mode. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go into my X-ray over here, toggle it on. And you can go on the internet, look at some references. So I'm gonna just go Red Bull Can. I'm gonna go to images. And I can kind of see here what's going on with the um, dimensions at the top and the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna just, we have the X-ray mode toggled on. I'm gonna select this bottom face, like so in the front of a graphic. I'm gonna go E to extrude down just a little bit and then S to scale. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude down just a tiny little bit and then E to extrude again, about this much. And I'm gonna go S just to scale it slightly. And then I'm gonna go Control B just to create a bevel like so. And then I'm gonna go over to the face select. I'm gonna turn off the X-ray here. Just like the bottom face, I'm gonna go E to extrude, S to scale and then click and then go G, Z, move it up. Then I'm gonna go Control B and I'm just gonna create a bevel 
and roll my middle mouse button just once, just to add in that segment. Then I'm gonna go Control plus to grow to selection, up to about here. Then I'm gonna to go to the bare metal and I'm gonna go assign. And I'm gonna come over here on a can, Control r up here, left click and just slide in a loop and bring it all the way to the bottom. So to about here like that. I'm just gonna double tap G just to bring it down even a little bit more. And then let's come over here to the top with the face select, select this face. And in the front orthographic view, let's go E to extrude just a tiny little bit and then E to extrude again, about this much and then click and then go S to scale it like so. And then go E to extrude up just a tiny little bit. And then E to extrude and S to scale just a little bit. And then E to extrude up about here and then click and then go control B to create a slight bevel and then go to your edge select, deselect everything, go shift alt left click on this edge and go control B just to create a slight bevel. And then let's come over here, control R in the middle, left click once and just slide up an extra edge. And then let's go over to our modifiers, add modifier search and type in sub. Let's get a subdivision surface and then let's select this top face over here. Control plus just to grow it and let's select it all the way down to about here. Let's go to our materials tab and just go bare metal and assign that like so. And we still need to just grab this top face. Go E to, and press I to insert it a little bit and then E to extrude down and then I to insert a little bit and then E to extrude up and then just go control B and just create a slight bevel. And if you wanted to, you could model the inside tab here and everything, but we're not gonna be seeing that, so I'll just leave it as it is. And I'll tab back out. Now we have our Red Bull can. I'm just gonna go G, Z, and just move it up onto the ground here for now. And that's looking pretty good. I might just tab into here, go Control R, just to add in a loop, and just roll in some extra topology and double click. And now we have that, so cool. Now we have our Red Bull can. I might just go R, double tap Z, and just rotate it till we see it more from the front. Make sure to save as you are working. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options, add in a plane. We're gonna go S to scale it up about this big. And we're gonna go Control A and apply to scale. Then tap into edit mode and go E to extrude it up. Click and then go X and delete those faces. Just so we have a box and then tab back out. Now we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a cube. We're gonna move it up and tab into edit mode and then go S to scale it down about this big. There we go. Right click and go subdivide and then come to your subdivision tab and bump it up. I'm going to go with four. I'm going to tab back out and I'm going to go over to the modifier, add modifier, search and type in displace and then go over to your textures property, click new and come here to the type and make it clouds. Then go back to your modifiers and just bring that strength way down. And you can also come back to you, your texture properties and then just mess around with that scale until you kind of get what you're looking for. I'm gonna go something like that and I'll just come and apply that. And then I'll go add modifier, search and type in sub and get a subdivision surface. And then for now, I'll just turn it off in the viewport display and turn the render amount down to one. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. Now I have an ice cube. I'm also gonna to go to my materials tab, go new, and for now just call it ice. I'm also gonna press M and create a new collection with that ice cube selected and called ice cubes. And then go create. And then I'm gonna go over to my physics tab. I'm gonna to go to my rigid body, give it a rigid body. Make sure it's active. And then under the collision, it's really important that you change this to box. And now that gives us a bounding box that's gonna make this simulation a lot less intensive. Though it is gonna come at the cost of a little bit of collision accuracy, but it's gonna be a lot faster. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna select a box. We're gonna go over to our the one down here and go give it a rigid body. This one we're gonna make passive and under the shape here, we'll make it um, not box, but mesh. Okay, we wanna make sure to make it mesh. So now let's grab this ice cube. Let's go move it over here and go R to rotate it, 45 degrees roughly. Then in the right view, we're gonna go R and rotate it like so. The reason for that is so the ice cubes don't fall on each other and make a stack. Then I'm gonna go Shift D and X, move it over a little bit and go Shift R and just repeat that action just a few times just to make some more cubes. And then what I'm gonna do 
In my right orthographic view, I'll move them over a bit and then go Shift D, Y and move them over a bit. And then I'm gonna go Shift R just to repeat that action. Something like this. And then in the front view, I'll just grab all of them. Shift D to duplicate and Z, move them up. And then go Shift R and just repeat that action a few times. I'm gonna go over about this many cubes. Make sure to save and then go to frame one. And then hit the space bar. And now we have some cubes. There we go. Pretty cool. Um, if you want to, you can come over to your scene properties. You can go over to rigid body world and let's just come to the cache and give it something like 90. And let's just come here and bake it. And now we have that. Now this is not an animation, but if you wanted to, I guess you could render this out as an animation. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come to about frame 90. I'm gonna grab the Red Bull can here and I'm just gonna go R and rotate it. Place it somewhere here and in the top view, I'll kind of m mess around with it a bit. Uh, but you guys can do whatever you want. And what I'm gonna do in the top view, I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a camera. And I'm gonna press zero to go into camera view, G, middle mouse button, and I'm just gonna zoom back. And then in my camera properties, I'm gonna make it 90 on the focal length. And you could have it either coming from the top, but what I might do is I might just rotate my camera around a 3D cursor and just kind of have it more looking something like this. But like I said, this is completely up to you how you wanna do this. I'll go with something like this. I'm also gonna select this box over here and I'm just gonna come where it says plane over here in the collection. I'm just gonna call it um, box interact. And I'm just gonna come here and hide it. And I'm also gonna turn it off for the render so we don't see it. And then I'm gonna click on my camera again and I'll just move it and position it. Now this bit, you can really do it however you want. It's completely up to you. I'm gonna turn this back to median point. I'm gonna select my can. I'm gonna go R and double tap Z just to rotate it and just kind of have the logo facing more forward. And here we pretty much have our scene completed. So what we're gonna do from here is some material and lighting. So let's go over to our render properties. Let's change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under your max samples here in the render, let's just change that to 50. Then let's go shift A, let's go to um, light options, add in an area light. Let's go G and move it up, R to rotate it. And let's go to our light properties and give it a strength of 120 and increase the size and then go shift D to duplicate it. Move it over and rotate one facing in. And then go Z and then go rendered. And now you can see we have this. Now, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to our world properties. We're gonna come to the color here and you can either change it to sky texture. So in Blender now you have this sky texture and you can see here it's a bit intense. So I'm gonna bring the strength down to 0.3. Or what you can do is you can go over here and give it a HDRI. Now you can look up what a HDRI is. You can download plenty of them for free online. I've already got some, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. But if you want to, you can just stick to the sky texture. So I'm gonna go, I've just got a library of them on my computer that I've downloaded over the years. So I'm just gonna pick one that I really like. And I might just grab some of these lights over here, the area lights, and I think the strength is a bit much. So I'm gonna bring mine just down to 80 on this side. And I think this one over here, I'll bring down to 60. There we go. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on the ice cube, one of them. Earlier we added the placeholder material. So we're gonna to come to our materials property, give it a roughness that's really low, and then come here to your transmission. And under the transmission, just take the weight up to one, like so. And I might just come to the roughness and just bring it up just a little bit. I'm also just gonna to come to the base color here and just drag this value up. And I'm also gonna to go to my render properties. I'm gonna go down and go to film. And I'm just gonna go and make it transparent because I'll add this in with afterwards, the background. So now I'm just gonna go back to solid. And I'm gonna come here to these ice cubes, turn these ice cubes off in the viewport. Let's select our can, let's go Z again and rendered. Let's go to our material properties and let's just go to the can. And let's come over here to the metallic, give it a value of one. And then bring down the roughness quite a bit, but not all the way. Then let's select the metal bare, make it fully metallic. And once again, let's take this roughness and just bring it down, but not all the way. Something like that. And now let's just quickly also go shift A. Let's go to our uh, mesh options, add in an icosphere. Right click and go shade smooth. 
Let's go S and scale it down a bit and just move it over to the side. Let's come to the drop down and give that the ice material. Then let's select our can here. Let's go to our particles, click plus. Let's make it hair. Under the render, we're gonna come here to the render as and change it to object. Then come down here to the instance object, click on the eyedropper and then click on that icosphere we added in. And now you can see this is what we have. We're gonna come here to the render and just change the scale all the way down. And then let's give it a lot of randomness by dragging this random value up, maybe to something like 0.9. And what we wanna do as well, is we wanna just come here to advanced, then come to the source and go use modifier stack as well. Cool. Now I'm just gonna select this icosphere and I'll keep, and I'll just press S just to scale it down so these droplets are a bit smaller. I'll select the can and I'm gonna go down to where it says children under the particles. I'm gonna make it interpolate it and I'm gonna make it the render amount 12 and the display, is, display amount will leave as 10. Okay, something like that. Now let's go ahead and bring back our ice cubes like so. And we have our scene set up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go render and I'm gonna render the image. And here is the final render. It has a background here with transparency. So I'm gonna go image, save as, I'm gonna just save it to my desktop and call it Red Bull Alpha. And I'm just gonna save it as a PNG. And now I'm opening up GIMP. This is a free program you can download on the internet. If you want to, you could just use Photoshop if you have that. I'm gonna take this Red Bull Alpha, just drag it into GIMP. And what I'm gonna do now, and this is completely up to you, you can grab any image you want, but I found one on the internet. I'm just gonna drag it into here. It's just a JPEG, and I'm gonna place it underneath the Red Bull Alpha layer. And I'm gonna come over here to my tools and get the scale tool. I'm just gonna scale this way up, make it a lot bigger, and then click scale. And I'm just gonna come here to filter, blur, and I'm just gonna Gaussian blur that and bring the X, Y up here a little bit like that. I'm gonna go okay. And then I'm just gonna click on the Red Bull Alpha. I'm gonna come here to color curves and I'm just gonna give these two handles a bit of an S bend here just to add more contrast. And I'm gonna come here to the value and change it now to blue. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue to some of the shadows base here. Like so, and I'm gonna go okay. And there you have it. Now, obviously with my original, I spent a lot more time on it, but you get the general idea here. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I will be putting the final result onto my Patreon and I'll see you guys next time.